BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hi, I'm Iona Valentine. It's Monday the 7th of October and this is the Scottish Football Podcast. Here once again with the last word on a weekend filled with incredible late drama. Here's Duke down the left-hand side. Fancies his chances against Forrest Lynch into the byline. Pulls it back. Chance! Score! Well, as Aberdeen maintained their 100% record, just how far can Tillene's team go? Also, Johnston, lovely ball forward to Nicholas Coon, edge of the 18, Nicholas Coon takes a touch and sends the ball to the back of the net, and Nicholas Coon might just have rescued the three points for Celtic. After disappointment in Dortmund, what did we learn from Celtic's determination in Dingwall? And, what have won it? They've only gone and won it! Unbelievable, it's Kennedy, it's Watkins to the byline, he cuts it back, and there's Kennedy from about four yards out, middle of the goal, tapping. What a comeback that is. Could Killy's colossal comeback kickstart their season? The Scottish Football Podcast, from BBC Sports Scotland. Well, joining me for this one, Air United's former Rangers and St. Johnson winger Jamie Murphy and sports editor for the Scotsman, Mark Atkinson. Now, there is so much to discuss in more detail, but Mark, what was your highlight of the Scottish football weekend? My highlight comes from a game I was at on Sunday, Aberdeen against Hearts, probably one of the best games I've been at this season. And it's the story of Duke, the uh, the, the forward who went AWOL in the summer, wanted to leave, a really, really talented player that Aberdeen um, did so well with when he first arrived. And just to see a player come back and make such a strong impact and feel the love of the supporters in front of a packed with uh, a really nice tale and um, a great show of man management as well. It was, a, it was a wonderful moment. So many to choose from this weekend, but I enjoyed that. Duke's a player that I enjoy watching. He's fast, he's pacey, he's exciting, and it's good to have him back in Scottish football. The fans must have absolutely loved that up at Bittardry too. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was a bit bashful at the end that the players pushed him in front of the red shed to take the acclaim. Um, and he, you could tell he was a little bit, uh, maybe embarrassed is the right word, because I'm sure he knows that his actions were were not befitting of a professional football player. Uh, but yeah, with uh, with Aberdeen winning once again, Pataudry was absolutely rocking. And uh, yeah, they, they were they were they're fond of Duke up there because he is such an exciting player. So very nice to see, I must say. Brilliant, a great highlight, Jamie. What was your one? I think probably Kamarnock's comeback. You know, two 0 down, uh, ten minutes to go. It's, it's never easy. So. To come back and score three goals, you know, manager and former assistant going against each other as well. There's always that factor, but to come back, Matt Kennedy getting that late winner, um, sending the Kilmarnock fans home happy. Yeah, that was incredible. It was it three goals in about eight minutes? <laughs> yeah, just seemed to be goal, goal, goal straight away. And again, you, you could see that the Kilmarnock fans absolutely loved that one. Well, two great highlights. We will get to both of those shortly. Now, before we do get to it, let's hear the latest Scottish football headlines. Well, Celtic remain top of the Scottish Premiership after Nicholas Coon's 88th minute strike earned them a two on away win over Ross County. There was late drama and a thriller at Pataudry 2 as Aberdeen eventually overcame Hearts 3 2 to preserve their 100% record, while third place Rangers record a more routine 2 0 win over St Johnston at Ibrox on Sunday evening. Kilmarnock claimed their first league victory of the season with an incredible 3 2 comeback over 10 man Dundee at Dens. Matty Kennedy's 94th minute strike the winner in that one. Motherwell beat Hibs 2 on Easter Road and Dundee United were 1-0 winners over St Mirren in Paisley. And in the SWPL, Rangers remain top after a 2-0 win over Motherwell. Well, as we just heard, let's start at Pataudry. Mark, you were just talking about that Aberdeen win. What was the atmosphere like for the whole game? Because Aberdeen fans, I mean, what's... 13 wins under Jim Aitalene. They are loving life just now. Yeah, Pataudry was was bouncing right from the word go. They had a, a display for Neil Simpson, a legendary figure up there just before kickoff. So that made the atmosphere was, was crackling. Right from kickoff, uh, they scored early. 
And um, you actually thought when they scored early that Hearts would fall apart because they'd been in Azerbaijan during the week in Europe and they were pretty tired uh, from travelling. But great credit to them. They they came back and actually they were the better team. Hearts really deserved something from that match. But when winning becomes a habit, you, you just keep going. And uh, Aberdeen responded really well to going 2-1 down. The crowd got right behind them. And then when Hearts went into 10 men and when, when Duke came on, they 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 just went for it. And you knew, you, you, you sometimes just know in a football stadium that a team is going to score. I think we felt that with Celtic as well, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But with Aberdeen, the goal was coming. And um, when they got it, the, the place erupted. There's so much feel-good factor at Aberdeen right now. And they're, they're loving life under Jimmy Tulleen. I think they also know that at some point it's going to come to an end, and especially the performance yesterday. I think better teams and more confident teams would have taken something off them. But to be in the position they are at the moment, um, top of Celtic, 100% record, it's beyond the club's wildest dreams. And uh, it's a very buoyant place right now. And of course, they play Celtic next. So, yeah, a lot of excitement, uh, potential and... um, yeah, just a, a great to see Pataudry. When it's when it's full, it's such an impressive arena. And uh, they're going places right now. There's no question about that. As you said, Mark, beyond their wildest dreams, I mean, Jamie, do you think last season that the, the fans, the club, would have believed you if you said next season you will win 13 games in a row under a new manager? I think if most of them are honest, they probably wouldn't have. But uh, it's been remarkable what the manager's managed to do since he's came in. You know, a couple of new players here, but most of it is... is the same group, just giving them that belief that they can go out and win week in, week out. And their start to the season has been magnificent. You know, like Mark said, it might come to an end at some point, but, you know, you've got to enjoy it while it lasts. It's quite incredible too when you think that that win for Aberdeen yesterday, that opens up a 19-point gap between Aberdeen and Hearts, who actually finished third last season. I mean, Mark, what do you even make of that when you hear that and and see that in the table just now? Yeah, it... It, it's it's an incredible gap at this stage. I, I remember Aberdeen um, and Hearts have, have, have flip-flopped with gaps in the past, so I wouldn't say it's completely insurmountable, but it's going to be a tall order for, I think, any of the bigger clubs, uh, underperforming capital clubs, I suppose, to overhaul them at this stage. It's, it's born out of, obviously, Aberdeen starting the season well, but Hearts also being very poor and having a managerial change too, and they're... They're quite, they've been quite underwhelming this season, although I do think they've got the players to get themselves out of the hole they're in just now. It's it's fascinating to listen to Jimmy Tulleen. It's the same message every single game. Stay humble, one game at a time. We've, we've won nothing yet. And we know in this league that the teams outside the old firm will go on barren runs. It happens. Aberdeen, I think, have built up a cushion that allows them to come off the boil a little bit um, because they... I've not seen enough from Aberdeen just now to make me suggest that they can maintain this form. They're still quite insecure at the back for me. They still have um, places in the team to improve. But what they do have is a, an armoury in their attack. There's so many players that can score goals and they're they're so fast and, and so direct. Um, they're in a really good spot. It would be a, it would be a very difficult it would, be, it would be a brave man to say they're not going to finish third right now at least because they that that's where they are. But uh, a lot of football still to be played. A lot of football, and like you say, it'll be very interesting to see what they do against Celtic when they do get back to league business. But I mean, Jamie, even when you look at Hearts, they remain bottom of the table on two points. They know they can win. They won in Europe midweek, but what will they take from that performance on Sunday? I think the performance, especially first half, is, is encouraging for them. Um, you know, it's not been their year so far in the league. You know, getting that great win the other night, you'd have thought that. Might have given them a bit of confidence, and it looked like it did in terms of performance. But they're looking for results right now. I mean, I mean, they don't want to be down the bottom of the table. They don't want to be fighting there at the end of the year. So they're going to have to pick up points um, over the coming months to make sure they're not involved in, the, in that bottom six scrap. Well, it's a, a huge time for Hearts, especially to see what they do when they do appoint a new manager. And in terms of Aberdeen, could they really win the league? Well, as luck would have it. We'll have a special episode out tomorrow asking that very question, so make sure you don't miss that. For now, though, let's talk about the team who are currently above them on goal difference. Celtic, it was a late comeback for them to win as they overcame Ross County 2-1 
in Dingwall. Mark, what was your take on that win for Celtic? Did they demonstrate their resilience? Of course, yeah. To come to come back from a goal down against a team that's always difficult to play against uh, on their own patch. I think we saw last year Rangers, their their title bid faltered in Dingwall. Um, it's always difficult for teams to come back from a, a European match and play domestically. I always think if you're playing the old firm, you want to play them after they've been in Europe just because of preparation and also the fatigue and tiredness. And it's mentally sapping when you lose 7-1 in Dortmund. It doesn't matter how much better your team is than the opposition, you, you still have to show fortitude and resilience in such moments and that's what Celtic did and that's what Brendan Rodgers said afterwards. He talked about the fabric of Celtic and, and how the current team showed that. They just relentlessly went for the goal second half. They, they From about 60 minutes in, they, they just pushed Ross County back and back. Um, a winning mentality, that's what happens when you're champions. Um, so yeah, no surprise at all that they got over the line there. Really nice goal by Nicola Kuhn. I thought it was a really composed finish uh, to get that winning goal. Um, and yeah, they're 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 in a great place right now domestically, and I expect it to continue. They, they've got they've got such a strong squad at this level in comparison to the rest. Um, and at times they'll underperform, but they'll have that that. That, that sort of button, that preset that makes them win in difficult situations. Mm -hmm. you, you, you do see that when you watch them play, especially getting a performance like that yesterday. Because, Jamie, how hard is it to come back from a defeat like they did midweek in the league? And actually, what did you make of that performance too? Obviously, it wasn't what they were looking for midweek. You know, I think we can all say that, that the result was not what they thought they were going to get going to Dortmund. But... You know, coming back, Ross County away, it's a tough place to go. To be able to come out of that with a win's massive for them. I mean, once they scored the equaliser, you always knew it was coming. And you know, and that's the kind of team that they are. They have quality all over the pitch. And like Mark said, it was a great finish from Kuhn at the end, just cutting inside. Made it look easy, to be honest. But that that's kind of a team that's been there over the past couple of years. They know what they're doing. The manager knows what he's doing. And... To come out with the victories is huge. How big a difference did the subs like Kyogo, Forrest, Bernardo make in that victory? I think any team worth or so has to have a good squad. You know, these players that you've said, they're all very good players and they're not starting. But it shows the, the attitude and, and the quality they have that they come on and can affect the game. You know, you've got Kyogo sitting on the bench who's a many million pound player and top scorer in the league, all this kind of stuff. So it's a strength and depth that probably no one else in the league has. You kind of mentioned that too, Mark. I mean, even when you look at the likes of Arne Engels, what did you make of his performance? These are multi-million pound players that are, are coming on and, and making a difference. And um, if one of them isn't quite at their game, then Brendan Rodgers has the luxury of bringing on another one. And... Um, I mean, I like Engels as a player. I think he's a, a really um, astute signing with lots of potential. He's a, he's a very classy football player, but he's not the only one on that Celtic team. And um, that's that, that's what they're equipped to make sure that when they find themselves in difficult situations in the league, they can they can get get out of it. And that's probably the difference between them and Rangers right now. You wonder if Rangers go a goal behind, do they have the, the the weaponry to come out and make sure they can they can change the course of a game? I'm not sure they do, but Celtic that that bench is loaded. There's a, a, a second starting eleven waiting to come on, especially in the final third, and um, that's just going to get them over the line throughout the season at, at this level. They're just far too strong and. Um, Midfield, how many options do you want? You've got you mentioned Engels, but you've got Bernardo, you've got Luke McCowan, you've got Callum McGregor, you've got Rayo Hatati. These are five top dollar midfielders at this mm -hmm. level. Absolutely. I mean, even when when we look at Ross County, have they given other teams a blueprint on how to play against Celtic, Mark? Is that how Celtic actually should have played against Dortmund? <laughs> yeah, I, I think Celtic should have been a little bit more pragmatic in Dortmund. Um but they were going in with such a good feel-good factor that they probably felt they could get something. Dortmund played very well. Um, I think domestically, you have to, you really have to try and frustrate Celtic. There's no team in this division that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. 
the, the, if you if you open up, you'll get punished. So yes, County showed the blueprint. I think the the conditions um, of this match were conducive for County getting closer. It's an early kickoff in Dingwall. They're on the back of coming from from Europe, so there were there were opportunities to take advantage of Celtic potentially being a slightly weaker place than they have been in previous um, Premiership matches where they've either had a home European game or had a free midweek. But County will have definitely given managers food for thought about how to play against Celtic. But ultimately, it was still the same result, just by a less of a winning margin. And uh, that will probably worry um, other managers as much as anything else. (laughs) Well, let's move on uh, to the final game on Sunday evening. Rangers overcame St. Johnson. On paper, it is a win that appears to fall into the routine category, Mark, would you say that's fair? Yeah, I think that's a good good way to describe it. Routine. Um, a very weird match, to be honest. A Sunday night is not for me in the Premiership. Uh, I think it works on the continent, but I think for, for Scottish football, Sundays are, 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 are times that we haven't played for a long time. Um, the, the stadium felt a bit flat, I thought. That, but again, Rangers... The, the, that squad's not as strong as Celtic, and Philip Clement's done really well just to get the team over the line in a difficult period. They um, Bachelor had Cherney scoring two really good goals. That will help him because he had a difficult spell. Uh, he's a very talented player, and I think if Rangers get the best out of him, they've got a really strong player on their hands. And St Johnston actually played quite well at times and, and, and put Rangers under a bit of pressure, but ultimately they got the job done. And that's all that Rangers can do right now is just try and keep that winning run going, build up. And and as the, the players and the manager said afterwards, they are still building this team. And when you're in that slight period of transition and trying to get confidence into the side, the best way to do that is by getting wins. It's a forgettable match, but job done. Jamie, it was quite an, an eventful one for Yanis Hadji, wasn't it? Yeah, the, you know, I'm sure Rangers fans will be delighted to see him out there. He's an exciting player, you know, both feet, looks for the pass. And you can tell from from his assist for the goal where he, he's looking forward. He plays a good ball through to Cherney for the goal. So it's exciting for Rangers fans to have him back, but I'm sure he'll be disappointed going home last night with his, with his red card. I don't think there's any arguments about it. I think he probably knows that himself. It's just one of the late challenges where he sticks out a leg and, and it looks quite bad on the video. So disappointing night in the end for him, but... I'm sure everyone at Ibrox is glad he's, glad he's back out there. In terms of St. Johnson, they've now got Simo Valakari coming in. He's got the international break to kind of get things moving with St. Johnson. What difference do you think he can make, Jamie? And, and and what does he have to do to this side? I think firstly, he has to, to shoot it up a little bit at the back. You know, they have to get better at keeping clean sheets. Um, going forward, they need a, maybe a little bit of spark somewhere, but... You know, that's what the manager's been rung in for. It's, he's been rung in to, to solve these kind of problems and try and get them away from, from the relegation zone. Well, let's move on to the other games of the weekend. I mean, Jamie, you mentioned it at the start there at Dens Park. Dundee to Kilmarnock 3. Mark, what did you make of that Kelly comeback? That was needed for them, wasn't it? Yeah, huge moment for Derek McInnes and his Kilmarnock team. When you play so long against 10 men, you're expecting to get a positive result. You drop two goals behind. Had they not got anything out of that match, they would have gone to the international break on a real downer. But conversely, they, they, they just kept going. They found a way. Um, once they got one goal, that was the tap on. It just it just flowed. I think Dundee fell apart quite quickly. It's hard to defend for 45 plus minutes with, with 10 men. And I don't think Dundee are, are the most uh, resolute team at the back either. They conceded a lot of goals and they'd lost Mo Silla, which meant that Kilmarnock were able to dominate the midfield and, and pour forward. Kilmarnock are, are, are a decent team and I don't expect them to finish... Um, fourth again this season that wouldn't be my expectation of them but I certainly don't expect them to be down at the bottom of the table either and the longer these winless runs go on uh, the harder it is to break that and um, that's why it's so important for Kilmarnock to get motoring they have they have um, a really strong attacking array especially out wide uh, and the way they came back that gives them uh, a platform to build on going into the, the, the next set of fixtures and just allows the, the a bit of pressure to come off Derek McInnes. I don't think he's under any uh, real pressure at all, but 
it allows him to breathe a little easier, takes the heat off, and they're now um, off away from the relegation spots, which I think will be a, a real boost for them. Now, elsewhere on Saturday, it was a great result for Motherwell. They continued their brilliant start to the season with a 2-1 win at Easter Road. But, Jamie, how concerned will Hibs manager David Gray be? You know, I think Hibs fans, they expect more. I think that's the big thing. And, you know, I think it's probably saving them that David Gray's the manager. He's a, he's a fan favourite, so they're wanting him to do really well. They've just got to find that little bit extra. I mean, Easter Road has to be a fortress for them, and so far it hasn't been. So they'll be disappointed with that. It's They're playing against a good Mullow side, to be fair, who, who've started the season really well. But, you know, Hibs are wanting to win the kind of games and, and push higher than, than they've got to got to put better performances in. It's quite incredible now, Mark, when you look at the table. I mean, it's tight at the top. But the bottom six, a win for any team could change anything in the bottom six, couldn't it? Yeah, especially for teams like Hibs and Hearts that, that, that they're 10th and 12th respectively. I don't think that's where they want to be in. Um, I thought Hibs against Motherwell, they they had their moments. They probably deserved a point, at least on the balance of play. But there's a, a brittleness to Hibs at the moment, and they take a baby step forward. They win at St. Beat St. Johnston, then play really well at Ibrox. So you're expecting them to kick on against Motherwell, and then they lose, and they just go backwards. And that will really frustrate David Gray. There was a red card in this game. Nectar Triantis gets sent off for a, a really silly tackle when he's on a yellow card, which I think will have a manager tearing his hair out, although David Gray hasn't got much hair to tear out, uh, he would, he'd uh, he'd certainly be frustrated about, about that one. I think Motherwell, who have managed to get themselves away from that kind of um, bottom six zone, I was really impressed with them. Lennon Miller, as always, uh, did, did well, but they, they, they're just a really difficult team to play against. And Kofi Balmer and his long throw... Um, it's it's just like a corner kick that he throws, and it's a missile that he chucks in every time, and that's that got the, the Andy Halliday goal at the end. Um, I think um, Stuart Kettle deserves a lot of credit for the team that he's put together there. They they look really hard to beat, and they've got a very strong goalkeeper in Aston Oxborough as well, who who played well. So they're um, they're in a good place for Hibs. Yeah, I I I wonder if they've got enough to get themselves out of that bottom six um, sort of congested area. I think it could be quite a difficult season for them if they don't uh, pick up results sooner rather than later. Mm. Does the table surprise you, Jamie? Do you think it's kind of shaped up how you thought? Not really, with uh, Hibs or Hearts being so far down. You know, big clubs, you're expecting them to be pushing in the top six. I mean, you could maybe say Kilmarnock's a little bit of a surprise as well after the season they had last year. But, you know, having Europe seems to be a, a big thing with both Hearts and Kilmarnock being down there. So I think over the coming months, uh, leaving itself up, I think the teams down the bottom will get better. But at the minute, you know, your teams, Aberdeen, Mullow, Dundee United, they're all flying high in the top six and, and want to stay there. All right. Well, another brilliant weekend in the Scottish Premiership. It is time to wrap things up. But many thanks to Jamie Murphy and Mark Atkinson. And thank you for listening. Now, remember, we'll be here with new episodes of the Scottish Football Podcast bright and early every weekday morning. So to make sure you don't miss out, just subscribe on BBC Sounds or wherever you listen. Enjoy your Monday. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. This is the shocking moment English football has been dreading. My name is Moses Swaybu and I used to be a professional footballer, but then I got in deep with organised crime and became a match fixer operating in the English league. A match fixing investigator has highlighted two matches he says appear to have suspicious betting patterns. How honest are you going to be with me? This is 100%. Join me for Sports Strangers Crimes presents Confessions of a Match Fixer. Listen on BBC Sounds.